like to thank you for joining us in our program, Understanding of the Father's Heart. I'm Evangelist Teacher Joseph A. Brown. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. We thank you, Father God, for being the living God that you are, for being the truth, and for being our hope and our joy. And Father, we ask in Jesus' name that you will open up our understanding in your word. Father, as you prepare us, Father, for the soon coming King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, you say that we ought not be caught unawares, but we should be in a, a state of readiness, Father, in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray right now, Father God, that you will open up our minds and our hearts, Father, that, Father God, that we will take to that understanding, Lord God, as we walk in your divine deliverance. Father, is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise be to the living God. I once again want to thank you for joining us in our study of our Lord's holy and divine word. And I want you to know today that we serve a great God. We serve an almighty God. And we serve a God that surely cannot fail. We want to look for a while in the book of Second. Thessalonians the second chapter and our reason for going there is that we want to uh, elaborate on what we talked about uh, just recently America in crisis now dearly beloved you know some people will say that that is a negative message but we have to look at what is happening around us in order that we who are true born again believers can prepare and ready ourselves because we know that our Lord and our God will not fail us and we know according to God's Word that he warns us when certain things are beginning to happen around us you know one thing that many people don't know that the Word of God declares that there will be a great apostasy in other words a falling away from the things of the living God the Word of God said there will be false apostles and false teachers and false preachers false priests in the latter days and so you know the Lord God desired for us to be aware of these things because he don't want us falling into false teaching and false doctrines and that's why I believe that we need to get what God has espoused to us through his holy and divine word and not necessarily what man tells us then at the same time it does not relate to the word of God it has to relate to the word of the living God because we can ask God what is happening with our world today and the Word of God will explain to us that in the day that we're living today, there is a great falling away. And the Word even declares that judgment begins in the house of God. Now, I want you to turn with me to Second Thessalonians, because what we want to do is talk about the signs of the falling away, or the great apostasy that is happening in the church even today. Now you say why that is needful. It is needful because we don't want to fall to anything that is not the truth. Amen? That's what's so very important. And the truth is the Word of God and the Word of God only. That's the only way that you can judge certain things is by the Word of the living God. If it does not coincide with the Word of God dearly beloved it is made up by man and could have been uh, engineered by Satan himself so in first of uh, second Thessalonians the second chapter the Word of God begins now we beseech you brethren this is Paul writing uh, to the church of Thessalonica by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ now he's talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Now, 
Paul was trying to get the believers of that particular church to understand this, that he did not want them to be shaken about the things that was being said and the things that were being done around them or amongst them. He did not want them to be shaken. And dearly beloved, God is calling you and I not to be shaken by the things that we are seeing happening around us. Because what is happening now, there is a lot of fear mongering that is amongst us. Now what we have to understand as a believer is this, that if you are a born again believer, your God, according to his holy and divine word, has promised to protect you and to protect you supernaturally if that's what it takes. Amen. So we have to understand that, that we are not in the same stead as the world is. The world is different from us. They should walk in fear. They should walk in doubt. They should walk in unbelief. They should be looking for a savior to change the world for better. They should be because they are not connected to the ultimate source, which is Almighty God. And that's why the word says, be not shaken in mind, be not troubled by what you are hearing or what you are seeing, neither by spirit nor by word, not even the words that are coming forth, nor by any letters that might be sent to you or asked from us. Or we can say email today, we can say what is on the internet, it does not matter. God is in control of the life of his believers. Even if God desire and allow you or I to become martyred by the world, that's God's choosing. According to God's word, those who chose to be martyred, they receive a better resurrection. Glory be to God. So dearly beloved, is a great thing when a child of God, and I'm talking about a Christian child of God, when he is born again, and if God chooses to martyr him or to have him martyred, then his life or his resurrection is even better than other resurrection. So it's a blessing to serve Almighty God. It is a blessing. And the Word of God says that, as of from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. So we are living in a day of great deception. Where great deceptions is not only happening in the world, but is happening across the pulpits, especially in America. Where things are being said and things are being done for gain's sake for gainsaying rather than the glorification of the kingdom of God. Amen. There are people who are coming in. Now, I've heard this myself, where there was a, 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 a people or pastors who have said that they are trying to get certain people in their a congregation so that they would be liberal givers because they are one who have riches and it would help their congregation grow uh, numerically and financially if they could get these certain people in. Good to be loved. This is not of God. This is of Satan. Because the Bible says and declares that God does the drawing, that God makes the increase, not man. The church ought not to be changing in order to satisfy the community, but the community rather need to be changing because of what God has said and the preach and the power of the word of the living God. What has happened is that people have come inside and have changed that which God has declared in his word. Dearly beloved, this is not good. This is not a good thing. When we begin to uh, uh, try to imitate what the world is doing or do what is necessary so we can bring in the numbers. Dearly beloved, it is not about the numbers. It is about purity. It is about standing on the word of the living God, no matter what anybody say. And many times, as Jesus Christ did, you will stand alone if you're standing on the word. There will be many that will reject you. There will be many that will say that you are old school because the fact is that you're standing on God's word. You're standing on what you believe. You're standing on what the prophets 
and the apostles passed down unto us. But time is changing so quickly. And the sad thing that it is changing not only in the world, but it's changing also within the church. And dearly beloved, that is a travesty. Because now the world does not have a compass in order that they can look unto. Because the compass looks just like them. And dearly beloved, as the word says here, and let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Talking about the day of the Lord's coming. And and because they were telling the believers then that the Lord had already returned. And they had missed it. And what the word is saying, and what Paul is writing to them and letting them know, no, the Lord Jesus Christ have not returned. Let me give you reasons why he has not returned in order that he could put their hearts at rest and their minds at rest so they can realize. And even today, there are people who believe, even within the church, that the Lord is not going to return. But according to God's word, he will return. And he said, and he said Paul writes, except there come a falling away first. So what he was saying here is that there is going to be a falling away. There is going to be an apostasy from the things of God. There are going to be those that will take the word of God and no longer live the word of God and preach the word of God, but rather begin to preach their own ideology, their own philosophies. And this is what they were doing amongst them at that time. But Paul was saying, writing to them and say, look, there will be that falling away. Remember that. Because was it not Paul who wrote in the book of Acts saying that, when he has gone and when he has left, there will be grievous wolves that will come into the fellowship and will try to destroy the flock or cause the flock to flee or to scatter. He said that this would be so. And those who will remain will be given false teachings and false doctrines. And Paul was telling them, get ready, be prepared, because it is happening even right now. Can you believe that Paul wrote this almost 1,500 years ago? Can you imagine the changes that have been made since Paul wrote this? Dearly beloved, the changes are great. Even now I hear that some say that Paul was not a true disciple or a true apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was just an add-on. And the things that he wrote, you don't really have to pay attention to it at all. Yes, that kind of teaching is out there now. You'd be amazed at the things that Satan is preparing in order to uh, weaken the church, to water down the Word of God. You'd be, you'd be surprised how men have taken the Word of God, and, and women included, have taken the Word of God and perverted the Word of God in order that it will not have any power nor any strength. And they will say to you, listen to me, not the Word of God, but hear what I say. Hear what I teach you. Forget what the Word of God says. But dearly beloved, you ought not fall to that. You need to stand on the Word of the living God. Even as Paul was sharing with them and writing these letters to them because they had become fearful. They had become doubtful in the fellowship because of the false brethren and the false teaching. That was coming forth. And Paul writes to them. That there would be a falling away. But he says. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. And it is even in at work in the earth today. That man of perdition. That sin of falling away. From the word of the living God. And the word says that. In a full verse. Who oppose it. And exalted himself above that which is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 
He said these things going to take place first. When God will be declared no longer as God in this earth, but this man of perdition who is coming forth will declare himself as being God, as though he is the one to be worshipped. He says, then will come the Lord Jesus Christ. So he hasn't returned yet. Don't be fearful. Don't be doubtful. For this man will reveal himself as God before Jesus Christ returned and literally destroy him and those who are following him. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, Paul said, I told you these things. And now you know what withhold it or what is restraining that he might be revealed in this time. For the mystery of the iniquity do already work. Only in he who now let it or restrain will let until he be taken out of the way. He's being restrained today. If the son of perdition, which is spiritual in nature today, reveal himself today, then we would know exactly who he is. But it's a spirit, a spirit of the Antichrist that is in the world today. A spirit that rejects the things of God. The things that do not want God in the equation whatsoever. But says, now I am the authority. And there are even some denominations today that say that they are the authority in the earth. And that God works only through them and not through his word, but rather through them. Dearly beloved, that's a great deception. There are many things that are happening today that is breaking down the fabric of the word of God. Breaking down the fabric, what we call the church today. And dearly beloved, you may close your eyes and you may stuff your ears and say, I'm not going to hear it. I'm just going to uh, believe what I want to believe. I'm going to believe what I'm told. I'm not going to try to find out myself because I could care less about it. Well, you know what? That's your choice. No one can make you believe. No one can force God's word on you. You have a choice. And there are many that will be deceived. There will be many that will walk the path of destruction. Not because the word was not available to them. Because they chose to ignore the word of the living God. And dearly beloved, there are things that are transpiring around us that we are literally taking it for granted as believers and telling ourselves everything is going to be all right. Well, it will be all right for those who stand on the word of God who trusts the Word of God, who is not willing to water down the Word of God, but to believe the Word of God. And you know what, dearly beloved? Those who do that, I want to say to you today, they're not perfect before God, but they are perfect through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's only the Lord that ultimately will keep them. And even as the word declare, even God himself said that David was a man after his own heart. Though David was an adulterer and other sins that was in his life. But his heart was toward God. 
And dearly beloved, that's what the Lord is asking from you today. Is your heart toward God? Or is it only toward yourself? Or is it only toward just making sure your needs seemingly be met? I say to you today that when we look at God's Word and we see, as the Word says, that the iniquity shall be on the earth and that the false, uh, uh, for it says, for, for the mystery of iniquity that already work and is working in the earth, and then shall the wicked be revealed one day, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. It chose not the truth. They chose to walk in darkness. They chose not to walk as God had called them to walk. And dearly beloved, amongst us will be many of those who are walking that way. Contrary to the word of the living God. Not declaring the word of God, but only trying to fill their coffers. Dearly beloved, Flee from under them because your soul is at stake. Come to the Lord in a real sense and let him lead you where you ought to be. But be not deceived. Allow yourself not to be deceived. Because I want to say to you, if you are a born again believer, then you have the ability within you not to be deceived. God has given you that ability. And as he said in the word here, and it's very clear, he says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie rather than the truth. God will give them strong delusions. Yes, they will believe that they're praising God. They will believe that they're glorifying God. They're going to believe that they are children of the living God. In their mind, they will believe that. They will think that they are God's children. Because they were told that they were God's children. Because they did all the things that they were supposed to do. That they were told to do. They were given, they gave their tithes. They gave their offerings. They, <coughs> they went to church every Sunday and and during the week. They were there. They were willing participants. They were there when things needed to be done in the church. They were very faithful to those things. But the Lord God says, I will send a strong delusion unto them. That they will believe that that is what it takes in order for them to be saved. But they will be lost. Because they would have believed a lie. I think of the many people that I have met in my time of being a Christian and being an evangelist of God's and teaching His Word. The many people in the many churches I've been into. And when I see people who I know by the Spirit of God that they don't really know the Lord. But they are very, they are very helpful people. They are very uh, uh, church-oriented people. They're doing everything that the pastor asked them to do. They're doing everything around the church that needs to be done. But yet, they have not been born again. They have not even been told from the pulpit that they need to be born again. They simply get a little pat on their head and told, thank you for doing what you do around here. 
God's going to bless you for that. That's what they say. But their souls still belongs to Satan. Dearly beloved, be not deceived today. For I want you to know, our God is not mocked. For so whatsoever you sow it, that is what you will reap. And if you're sowing so that you can get a little pat on the head, are you sowing and you say, well, I'm giving my tithes and I'm giving my offerings. And there will be many that will stand before the Lord and say, Lord, I gave. What about this other person? He never gave anything. He never gave like I gave. And the Lord will say to them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. Dearly beloved. Come unto the Lord as He draw you by His Holy and Divine Spirit. Come to know Him and recognize Him as your God and give your life over to Him and allow Him to do a work in you because only He can change you. Religious rules, religious mores, and religious thoughts cannot do it. It's only by the word of the living God can that be done. And only God can show you that favor by His Holy and Divine Spirit living on the inside of you, which is a requirement if one day you're going to get up out of that grave in the day of the Lord's coming and the great resurrection of the dead. Dearly beloved, our God bless you and a move in your life in a very special way. And I pray that he will continue to give you understanding. That you will recognize that in the Lord all things become possible when you really and truly know him. God bless you this day.